The Game Boy is one of the best-selling consoles of all time, so it's no surprise that companies attempted to release some unorthodox Game Boy accessories to cash in on the craze. Here's one of them. This is Bandai's Gyogun Tanchiki, Pocket Sonar, also known as Fish Finder, Pocket Sonar. It's exactly what it sounds like, a sonar device that hooks up to the Game Boy so players can find fish. Guinness World Records acknowledges the Pocket Sonar as the first sonar-enabled peripheral for a gaming console. Technically, this is also a Game Boy game, so it's an officially licensed product as well. Let's take a look. Inside the box is the cartridge, the sonar device, a cord winder, and a waterproof case. The cartridge is bigger than your standard Game Boy game and takes four AAA batteries. This is to power the sonar device. Coming out of the top of the cartridge is a wire that connects directly to the sonar. The bobber keeps it afloat. The cord winder is there to assist with winding the cord. It's a very long cord because you have to toss the sonar out into the water. The waterproof case helps keep your Game Boy free from water damage. It hangs around your neck like a giant, gaudy piece of jewelry. Let's look at the sonar functionality. How does a fish sonar work exactly? The sonar sends out an acoustic signal through the water. When the signal comes into contact with anything, like fish or plants, the signal is reflected back, which is then converted onto the Game Boy screen, giving you an idea of where the fish are. Let's freeze frame this screen to go over the sonar and some of its options. This portion of the screen shows what the sonar is detecting. The number to the left is the current depth of the water. This is measured in meters, so in this example, the water is about 9 feet deep. The range of numbers below is the depth range. You can change this number depending on how deep the water is. In the menu below, you can change a few options such as the detection range, scroll speed, and the fish icon. So, does the sonar actually work? We're here in beautiful Belton, Missouri, and we're gonna test out the Game Boy Pocket Sonar. I've got the sonar right here. I've got my Game Boy protected around my neck and it's a little splash guard, so won't get wet. And I only look slightly ridiculous. So, let's see if we can catch some fish. So using this is pretty simple. Um, you basically just throw this into the water. It's got a bobber on it, so it's gonna float. So, let's toss it out. Well, the sonar works, and it found some fish on this side of the duck, so let's see if we can catch one. Oh. Hey! We got one! This guy's pretty big. Well, I don't know, I don't usually keep fish, I always throw them back, so let's just release this guy. Whoa. Hang on, buddy. Thanks for your help. Pocket sonar works. Surprisingly, there is more than just a sonar on this cartridge. There's a fish encyclopedia, which provides information on various types of fish. Players can search by name, water conditions, such as freshwater or saltwater, or by the fish's silhouette. Keep in mind, everything is in Japanese, so for players who don't speak the language, this encyclopedia isn't helpful. There's also a fishing mini-game. Players take control of a fisherman who has to reel in fish. It's a very simple, sort of mindless game, but it's a nice inclusion. Imagine you're sitting on a boat waiting for a fish to bite. You can play this little mini-game while you wait, and after you catch something, try to find it in the built-in fish encyclopedia. One other thing to note, the pocket sonar is surprisingly compatible with the Super Game Boy and Game Boy Player. However, the sonar portion does not work. You can only access the fish encyclopedia in the minigame. Also, the pocket sonar won't work on the Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, only on the Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, and Game Boy Light, which sadly never came out in North America or Europe. The pocket sonar came out in 1998 and was only released in Japan. That makes sense. Fishing is a very popular pastime in Japan, in a major economic industry. The Toyusu fish market in Tokyo is the largest seafood market in the world, bringing in $3.8 billion every year. 
There's even fishing restaurants in Japan, where patrons catch their own fish and chefs prepare it for them. It's questionable how popular the pocket sonar would have been outside of Japan, so it's no surprise Bandai didn't release it anywhere else. Talk about a niche product. But Bandai didn't stop there. They also released the Handy Sonar on their own handheld system, the Wonderswan. Bandai's pocket sonar was probably pretty cool when it came out, but it's purely a novelty at this point. Any avid fisherman will get better results from a standard fish finder. Still, it's cool that this even exists. Developers were really thinking outside the box with some of these accessories. Maybe Bandai saw this as a great opportunity to make something unique. That's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching. Funding for Gaming Historian is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. Thank you.